Swallowing is a complex process, using nerves and muscles to move food from the mouth to the stomach. After chewing, the prepared food is collected by the tongue, making it ready for swallowing. During this stage, the larynx closes tightly, and breathing stops to prevent food and liquid from entering the lungs. Food or liquid then enters the esophagus, which carries it to the stomach. Dysphagia occurs when there is a problem with any part of the swallowing process. Accurate diagnosis is vital to successful dysphagia management. On the left is a video of the modified barium swallow, a one-dimensional x-ray view of the patient's swallowing mechanism. You can see the black barium-coated bolus as it passes from the mouth and pharynx on the way to the stomach. On the right is a view of the dysphagia systems test, or DST. The full color view shows the food or liquid as it passes into the pharynx and is aspirated into the trachea, viewed in the center of the picture. The first is the respiratory system of dysphagia and is best defined as the ability to hold your breath for one to two seconds while the food passes over the airway and into the esophagus. In this view, as the food falls from the back of the tongue to the pharynx, your vocal cords should close and your epiglottis, shown in orange, should flip down over the true and false closed vocal cords to provide a three-prong level of protection. If any of those three things don't happen, the food or liquid will fall through the vocal cords, into the trachea, and then into the lungs. This is called aspiration, and is how aspiration pneumonia begins. The second system of dysphagia is muscular. This is defined as the ability to chew and move food through the mouth, down into the pharynx, and into the esophagus. This view illustrates that there are many coordinated movements that need to work in harmony to swallow safely. If the patient's muscles are weak, the muscles may work out of order or with little strength. The result is that the airway is not protected as it should be, and food or liquid may enter the airway, sometimes unchewed. This is very toxic to the lungs, and is also a choking hazard if stuck in the trachea, thus blocking the ability to breathe. The third system of dysphagia is the gastrointestinal system. When food is swallowed, it transits down to the stomach in a unidirectional movement, meaning only heading downward. When in the stomach, the food mixes with stomach acid. Reflux occurs when the food moves bidirectionally, back up into the esophagus and pharynx, and into the airway. When this reflux drips into the airway and is aspirated, it's like pouring acid into your lungs and is extremely toxic. The fourth and fifth systems of dysphagia are cognitive and neurological. With the cognitive system, the swallow is triggered in the central command of the brain. This information system tells the brain that the food entered the mouth. It's sweet, sour, needs chewing, needs a strong or weak swallow, or needs to suck on a straw. And finally, how much strength the pharynx needs to squeeze it into the esophageal opening. It even determines how big the esophageal opening needs to open in relation to the bite size taken. It also alerts the airway that reflux is happening and that the acid needs to be prevented from entering the airway. It's an amazing system. The neurological system then allows for these signals to be sent to the brain. If those nerves are malfunctioning, there may be little to no recognition, and the system doesn't know that the airway needs to close, or that the food is precariously close to the airway following the swallow, or that reflux is falling into the airway. The 
person has no response because they don't know it's happening. This is how silent aspiration occurs. A breakdown in any of these systems puts the patient at risk for dysphagia. Dysphagia management systems. Accurate diagnosis and effective management to improve the comfort, care, and quality of life of our patients suffering from the effects of dysphagia.